just a small disclaimer, my copy of the figure has stress marks on these hinges. It even tore the plastic. I have another replacement copy that's fine, but I'm using this. Not to make the figure look bad, as some might speculate, but because I want to keep the fresh copy as good as possible. You see this? You see what he's become? Don't do drugs, kids. Scavenger was seen in the film Revenge of the Fallen as the first villainous Decepticon and first with the Constructicon title in live action, completely destroying everything in his path in Shanghai. Although he featured an alternate color scheme that some designated as Demolisher based on the early toys. I guess you can argue they're different characters as the red version combined with Devastator much like this Studio Series figure, but I personally believe Devastator was too big and combined from multiple vehicles, not characters. In any case, there was early concept art that featured Scavenger in this deco. Scavenger transforms into a giant hydraulic excavator construction vehicle. It's good that after so many years they finally picked a name for him. Say what you want about the Bay films and how they constantly make changes to the original characters, but at least Scavenger did transform into an excavator. While the vehicle is normally impressively large, the scale is certainly out of whack compared to other figures in the line, but has it ever been exactly accurate? It's a hefty box with an arm, take it or leave it. Glad it's not a Voyager, besides, this isn't the biggest distraction. The side profile is fair, you can see some robot bits, but I like the one-sided canopy for the most part. Gonna be hard to work with no front window. The sides are fine with gunmetal paint app highlights and ladders that are telling of the true scale. The clips are painted in silver to blend with the vents and the silver in the treads is a nice addition. The giant arm looks good and is fully articulated with a scoop double midsection and ratchet at the base. These hydraulics break up if you move the scoop too far but that could benefit later. I know I bring up Rampage for exposed kibble on a construction vehicle which I could forgive because this isn't gonna be an elegant Mercedes bends anyways, but holy crap, look at this thing. It's just a mess with a giant wheel inside like a post-apocalyptic street sweeper. The original Devastator version of Scavenger was clean for the most part and much larger, but in this figure's defense, they used two Constructicons forming the torso, and the need to be remade into a combiner torso does get in the way but it still looks ugly. It's like a bin of toy parts that doesn't go anywhere. I'll say it rolls fine, but the head's right there, and there's hardly anything covering the front, but at least the loader can hide it. Also, the scoop is broken up. Despite the issues, I still like owning a massive excavator transformer, and if it gets some things right, I could be fine with it, but not impressed with it. Well, someone can scoop up those cyber keys. I think it's safe to say this alt mode is not really exactly clean or accurate. It. Not sure if there was a big giveaway on that. At least I can't say there's no effort. And most of it seems to be compact. Can't say it's good, but I can mess with this vehicle. Robot mode. The transformation on this guy is like a messed up bop at origami. When going into alt mode, certain things have to loop around and go into place, and it's tricky to remember along with some tight joints. However, the resulting robot mode looks good for a Baver's toy that's meant to look like this. In a way, this reminds me of Bone Crusher. People want these guys to be in a higher class than their original toys, and they did it, bumping him up to a leader. Now, sometimes that doesn't mean much anymore with the shrinking figures, but the overall scale goes down with it, and Scavenger is still pretty large. Simply put, I'm glad it's not Voyager anymore, but the Studio Series Ironhide will barely climb it, and his head height closely matches Bumblebee, but he feels massive, with two giant wheels, one stationary and the other free 
really spins, and giant arms rightfully taken from the arm of the vehicle. Even the scoop opens a little. I guess the biggest concern is, well, his design isn't stable due to the lack of feet. He's got a stand port, but besides that, the arms keep him up. I get why he has so much against it, but if Soundwave and Rampage can get a stand, why can't this guy? The head is pretty good, a lot of loose jagged bits come down like a messy beard, and of course it's got the Decepticon insect mouth, but I love the paint. The yellow eyes and the black paint with some of the details highlighted with silver. It almost looks custom painted. Did someone say, articulation? <laughs> Ball jointed head, hinge, shoulders forward and back, up and down, side to side, ratchet, rotation below, double elbow, wrist joint, finger, torso joint, side to side, and wheel moves. Posability is going to be abnormal for something of the shape. I'm not body shaming, but if you have a tire as a singular leg, what did you expect? Sort of wish you could swap the wheel or extend the limbs attaching it, but it would likely hinder the combination. No wonder he's kind of short in scale. He's squat. I also feel the head should have moved side to side a bit more. Now for some some tips. Be careful of the transformation joint here. It's brimming with stress marks making me concerned. If you pull down the shovel hands, you can use the hydraulics as gunners, and surprisingly enough, there is technically a way to get him to stand on his own. This doesn't really work in his normal form, but with the treads and the wheels, which I have to say is a pretty slick move. Anyways, if you open the wheel, move out part of each of the treads to a certain point, close it up, and balance him just right, it is entirely possible to pose him as such. They see him rolling. Basplosions. Going into combined mode is probably more confusing. I can get an idea of the robot shape, but the combination mode is just lucky guesses with how things swing around. But parts have to be in a certain order. It's wild. The arms turn around and fold in itself, exposing the combination port. The bottom wheel has a slot to insert the bottom torso, and somehow Mixmaster attaches to the top. I think the second wheel is supposed to be where the junk he sucks in shoots out. And wow. Couldn't hide the face in any way. Of course, this is why I'm concerned about the stress marks. But whose bright idea was it to have the entire upper section supported by this joint and beam? It wobbles and worries me. Something I've noticed people miss? The shoulder boxes do actually tab into the armature, supporting the weight of the arms once attached. Scavenger is certainly a big part of the start of the film and massively important to the combination, which makes the quality issues a little more concerning. If you want him as an update to the character or for the combination, then I understand. However, his transformation is not fun, and again, the issues really ruin it. Besides that, I still enjoy his very strange design, the wheel is nice to roll, and I don't have an issue owning him. I'd say, if you're aware of the problems, I still consider him. Hey, Peter, my wheelchair is a robot guy.